why don't you come on back to the war? Let's all get nervous. Why don't you come on back to the war? Don't be a tourist. It's not going to be nice, but Bolton's giving it all his might. Overnight, the Trump administration announcing the deployment of a U.S. carrier strike group and bomber task force to the Middle East in response to what it calls a number of troubling and escalatory indications and warnings from Iran. National Security Advisor John Bolton releasing a statement overnight that says the deployment is to, quote, send a clear and unmistakable message to the Iranian regime that any attack on United States interests or on those of our allies will be met with unrelenting force. Oh, you tough guy, you, Mr. Armchair General. And indications and warnings? Like Saddam's weapons of mass destruction? So let's make a lot of people suffer. We'll see what happens with Iran. If they do anything, it will be a very bad mistake if they do anything. I'm hearing little stories about Iran. If they do anything, they will suffer greatly. We'll see what happens with Iran. Well, if starvation by sanctions doesn't work, Let's maim and murder them instead. I mean, we've got allies to protect. You have backed, uh, both in word and deed, Israel's right to defend itself, which we exercise constantly. It's important to know that we have the backing of our great friend and ally, the United States of America. Of course. A collection of colonists plop themselves down in the middle of the Muslim world with plans to expand into a world, mind you, not too keen about it all. And we've got their back? I mean, Bibsy wants to fight the Iranians down to the last American. It's a sacrifice he's willing to make. Lots of U.S. soldiers going to die. They'll come back home in body sacks. But that's their patriotic price. We just don't win anymore. So come on back to the war and don't be embarrassed. We have to get back to rebuilding our country because you look at our airports, our roadways, our tunnels, our bridges, 67% of them are in trouble. Have we wasted we have too to much money over the past decade fighting wars? Has that been one of the biggest problems? Well, I'll tell you what, it's, I don't mind fighting, but you gotta win. And number one, we don't win wars, we just fight. We just fight, it's like a big... Uh, Vomiting, just fight, <laughs> fight, fight. We don't win anything. I mean, if you're going to fight, you win, and you get back to rebuilding the country. We don't win. It's uh, it's really a terrible thing. I mean, we, you know, our country used to win all the time. We don't win at all anymore. And you're going to let Bolton and Busy make you fight another war you can't win? It will ignite the entire region into a conflagration that will embroil U.S. soldiers on multiple fronts not only in Iran, who will widen the battle space by hitting U.S. bases in the Gulf, but Iraq will expand the fray by coming to the aid of their Shiite brothers in Tehran. Syria will be in the crosshairs with Israeli missiles raining down on them and be forced to take up arms. Hezbollah in Lebanon won't sit this one out, and with a hyped-up threat of it putting Israel in harm's way, you're going to feel the squeeze, Mr. Trump. Sheldon and the lobby will be all over that one and push you to back with troops on the ground, our cherished ally. Then, if Russia and China come in, you've got the makings of World War III with gas prices at home soaring. Every man shrieking like a banshee, but the few cheering with glee. That's a heck of a platform to run on, Donnie boy. All Biden and Bernie have to say is, bring the troops back home and you're a one-term press. Then we'll come on back to a war and we'll all get in it. Why don't you come on back to the war? That's right, get in it. Why don't you come on back to the war? Let's all get even.